Uh, right, I'm going to be. How, how are you doing, Lars? You okay? I'm fine. Yes. How are you? Yeah, really good friends. I loved the film. Um, I think because I watched it yesterday, which is actually quite profound because yesterday was Holocaust Memorial Day. So it was quite yeah, a, right. cool. Yeah, but um, it was a fantastic story. I mean, I obviously won't give away the ending, but it was a, <laughs> the ending was was brilliant. Um, but I'm going to begin by asking you today, what, what, what was it that attracted you to, to getting involved in Persian lessons? Yeah, I think actually it was the story already. So when I read the script, I didn't know the director I didn't know the the rest of the cast so I'm always hesitating um, if people ask me to participate in a movie that takes place during the second world war I think as a German you have a special connection or relation to this because I absolutely think that we are still very traumatized traumatized as a nation which is in a good way so it's still there. So it's still very present. And sometimes people used to say that it's, it's history. It doesn't have so much to do with myself. I disagree. So my, my grandfather, he was fighting in the war. My father uh, was born in the war and I was educated by them. So I have a very big social impact of it. And I, I can feel it. So I always feel very privileged to have the opportunity in a movie like this to go in my past, to go in the history of Germany and to confront myself. Uh, what does it still mean to me? And okay, that this is why I'm hesitating usually because I'm very allergic or I'm very mm, alarmed when, they, when it's too much illustrated. So if, if a movie tries really to show what happened during the Second World War, if a movie really tried to show what happened in a concentration camp, I think this is difficult because as a filmmaker, you have a big responsibility in the way that the mo a movie seduces you to believe that, you, that this is the way it happened. This is how a movie works. So sometimes after you, you have seen a movie, you think, okay, now I know what was going on, which is, I think, not possible to show in this particular case. So I was happy that the director put the whole, or, or the, the author put the whole story into a kind of, I don't know the English word, fable. So it's like a it's like in a fairy tale, you know, you take yeah, the yeah, yeah, fable, we say, yes, yeah, so, yeah, fable, fable, yes. Mm. And yeah, and, and it really blew my mind when I read it because all this aspect in a metaphorical way as well to say um, he's inventing a language which, um, which he made out of the names of the prisoners of the concentration camp. And this is also the reason why he, talking about the end, why he re remembers all these names. And that uh, a Nazi officer and a Jew uh, speaking in an invented language um, that is made out of names of, of Jews and homosexuals. I mean, this is really, I, I cannot imagine a better metaphor for uh, what was going on or, or to, 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 to describe the horror of the, this time. Yeah, I mean, obviously you use the word traumatizing and I've I've often thought that. I mean, it's we're still so close to the war. It's still, we're, it's only two generations before us. So I imagine it must be as, as a German and it's no, because obviously, as you said, it's very sort of- Yes, I mean, imagine just one little thing. Once a friend of mine told me and he's absolutely right. So from now, the 80s are as far away as in the 80s, the 40s, you know, and this is, I mean, for me, the 80s are qu quite uh, yeah. present, you yeah. know, I can remember the 80s. I, and, and to imagine that when, when, when I grew up in the 80s, the war was so close to the people as the 80s are now for me, this is really, yeah. Then you then you get an idea how how how, how that's really our latest uh, history. 
Yeah. Because I, mean, I imagine it must still be something that's so hard to process and something you may never be able to process. But does playing in, does acting in movies and playing characters from that time help the process in any way? Yeah, I think so. For me, absolutely. I mean, I was talking a lot about my father. I, I was talking a lot about my grandfather while we were shooting. And sometimes I help myself also in the scenes to ad lib things like, do you want to hear the story of my family? And I mean, it was cut it out at the end, but it helped me to, to make it as close as possible to really, I mean, this is, I, I'm always surprised when uh, there was a big conflict. There was a movie called um, The Downfall in Germany. Um, I think it was quite successful all over the world. In Germany, people were criticizing the movie. And one of the criticisms was that they said the way Hitler was presented is too human. And this is something I, I, comp I, I mean, I didn't like the movie uh, either. So I, I didn't like it at all. But out of other reasons, I think it's, it's absolutely necessary that you show that he's a human. So, because this is something I, I would be happy if, if they uh, would tell me, okay, Nazis have been aliens and they occupied the earth and it has nothing to do with us. It's the other way around. So I, when, I, when I confront myself with a character like Koch, I have to find this character in myself and not to hold it in a distance and to, to look on it. So it's more, I, I think there is some Koch in myself and uh, the Nazis, they have been elected. So the Germans voted for the Nazis. The majority of the uh, Germans wanted the Nazis to uh, rule Germany. And this is very important, although it's so banal, but it's very important to know because nowadays, everyone you're talking to, all the relevants, all the grandfathers, grandparents of everybody, they have been in the uh, resistance, you know? But, but the resistance was a very, very small group of very brave people. So the majority was, uh, they, they, they shared the same values at the Nazi, uh, as the Nazis. And this is, I mean, this is always the problem. It's, it's the same when, when you, when, I mean, Trump is not the problem. The people who voted for Trump, they are the problem. So it's the AfD in Germany, they are not dangerous. They are not, I mean, the problem is what makes them dangerous is that people vote for them so that they are now part of the government. This is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, so I was going to say just interesting because um, we have. I'm, I'm not sure where your family heritage is from, but my grandparents are from Berlin as well. So as well, oh, yeah. so, so okay. I have I have that connection to to sit to Germany as well. But because yeah. I was going to say because I go to the Berlinale every every year, obviously not this year. And I'm always struck by how many films there are. And maybe there's always maybe two or three films every year at the Berlinale about the kind of Second World War. And it does seem that Germany, perhaps more so than other countries, is confronting its own history. Do, do you think that's a fair thing to say? And how important do you think it is that Germany does face um, the, the, the kind of horrors of the past? It's sort of fa face on because here in England, you know, we have some bad things in our history with like imperialism and, and colonialism and you very rarely see movies tackle it it's almost like we mm. we choose to forget but Germans you've very much choose to remember did you think that's a, a very important thing yeah but it's ambivalent I think there there have been a lot of movies in the past which have the tendency to go in the wrong direction in the sense that they start to um, banalize or to it to tell history in a wrong way so that people start to forget that people start to think of the past in a wrong way or not in the realistic way or whatever so it's it's a very difficult subject to deal with and i mean i did some movies with a subject maybe not all of them taking place in the time. So I did a 
movie in Germany called The Bloom of Yesterday. And it was a Holocaust scientist I was playing. So it was in, in our times looking back to the time. So his grandfather was a, a Nazi. And yeah, I, I think this kind of movies, they really help us to, 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 to work on this trauma. I, I, I absolutely think so. So on the, on the other hand, they are really, really important. They are really, really necessary that we, yeah, that we don't forget that, that history will, will not repeat itself. Yeah. And you, you mentioned kind of modern politics. Are you worried um, at the moment that, you know, so I'm, I'm not saying suggesting that, that anything as, as drastic like like a, a, another world war could, could come about, but there has been a surge of, of right wing politics in Europe of late. Have, have, do you think it's fair to make parallels to, from today back to maybe Nazism in the, in the early 30s? Absolutely. It's always I think it's. This is, I mean, the tragedy. That is what, what makes me sometimes really sad or frustrated. That I mean, I'm 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 a theater actor, so I, I most of the time I work in the theater in Berlin in the Schauwiener since 1999. I've, I'm part of the company, and I'm dealing a lot with Shakespeare or classical plays. And I mean, it's frustrating to see that this kind of conflicts are imminent. They will always repeat itself. There will not be a time where people societies will say the conflict of Othello is not our conflict anymore. So this is an imminent conflict. And I think uh, uh, the hate against strangers, the hate against races or whatever, I mean, this is, it seems to be imminent. It, it will always be there. And I don't know how to solve it. Really, and th this is this is in a way very frustrating. I mean, look at the the past year. Uh, the what what th that was the big subject of of the the last year. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, because it's interesting. You say you don't know how to solve it. I was thinking that. I always have this idea that if I was alive in during the Second World War, I'd be I, I'd be doing everything I can to stop it. But it shows we're, we're powerless, aren't we? Sometimes, actually, you know, in in the <laughs> Yeah, but you you think I, I mean I'm happy that you I'm happy for you that you can say it. I would not say the same. I would say what what makes me so sure that I wouldn't work well in this context. So because I mean from a distance it's always easy to say I I would have been in the resistance, and um, I think I mean I, I I'm far away from from comparing it, but just as an example to understand this thought, I think there will be a time where our children or our children's children will ask us, how could you live in the capitalism? You knew how the system works. You knew uh, it, it's based on, on um, how do you say, Ausbeutung, on, uh, uh, that, that poor people have to suffer, you know? I mean, very simple thing. The, the, most of the money of the, of the Germans comes from selling weapons to, to other countries. I mean, this is really begot, this is really a paradox uh, that we think that we can be in any way um, uh, pacifists or that we can say that we love peace or whatever. We, we, we live in, in war times all the time. I mean, the, the war is not, uh, they, they don't fight the war in our country, they, they, they fight them uh, elsewhere, somewhere on other boundaries, but it's, it, these are our wars mm. happening right now. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask as well, because obviously you mentioned the kind of challenges in, in playing a character like Cock. And I was wondering, because um, obviously to try and get into that mindset must be a difficult thing to do, but do you have to like the character in order to then portray him do you or do you have to find pity or because obviously it's your job I suppose to to find that strand of humanity and in this instance uh yeah did you find that but that by playing cock you kind of had to had to like him yeah absolutely I think this is necessary I, I mean it's it's the same thought that I think when people sometimes they say oh I was so shocked I saw the movie and then it, it is at the at a certain moment, I sympathized with Koch and I, I really start to like him. I mean, but this, I mean, this is, this is the conflict. 
it would would be so much easier if 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 we were just full of hate to these people or if we don't uh, see ourselves in this character. So I, I think this is the moment where we start to identify. I mean, this is what the word is about. You know, we start to identify if we see uh, aspects of ourselves in 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 the other person, and this is absolutely necessary to to build up this conflict. So this is my only aim when I do it. But And in the moment where I play him, I can abs absolutely understand everything, all his decisions. And I mean, it's not that, that I, I would not say I, I, I tolerate them or I would not say I, I would do the same, but I understand, out of the logic of the character, I understand it. Yeah, yeah I mean, obviously- because, because, Yeah, no, no, sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say it's a bit of a two-hander with Nahul, you know, the kind of two of you, sort of, it's a real kind of two-piece uh, set um, um, film. But you've, you've worked with some brilliant uh, performers that you've kind of co collaborated with. I mean, obviously, Nina Hoss recently and My Little Sister, and I was looking at what you were coming up there, so Gerard Depardieu and Isabel Huppert. I mean, I, I guess there's that saying, you're only ever as strong as your co-stars. You, you must be thrilled to have had these opportunities to, to work and collaborate with such brilliant performers in your career. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, this is something, sometimes people ask me, okay, how to start with it, how to find an agency, how to become a well-known popular actor or a successful actor. And it's, it's very difficult to describe because I think it, it's, it's happening. So you cannot really force it, which is on the one hand tragic, but on the other hand, it calms you down because I don't believe in, in the fact that I go to a party and I talk to a producer and then he comes up with a role or whatever. It just, it's happening. It's happening. I don't know how, but it, it so my, my wife, she used to say in the beginning, 20 years ago, when I was frustrated, my, my wife always said, you have to piss in the corner till it stinks. <laughs> and I, 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 <laughs> absolutely, I think this is absolutely true. So what I wanted to say is, I, I saw Noel in a movie, in a French movie called uh, 165 Beats Per Minute, or I don't know, I'm not sure, sure about the number, but I saw him in this movie and I was blown away. So I thought, what, what, what is this? What a brilliant actor. And I was absolutely sure because it was a French movie that he's French, but actually he's Argentinian and he learned French for the movie. And now he learned German for the movie and he's ex extraordinary talent, especially uh, in a musical way or in a music in his in his musicality and um in languages and that's really yeah and i mean it was it was interesting that i just saw the movie and then i i meet the actor and isabelle Huppert, I, I shot with her I, I of course like i think like every actor uh, i really adore her and and then it's happening so yeah i'm, I'm very i feel very privileged you're right i mean it's when sometimes, I mean, especially in these times, because now it happened that I have two months no work and I'm just sitting in the bath tube. And then I, I, I start to remember and I said, okay, I met her, I met him. I met, and, and then I think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I was really lucky and very privileged. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned, yeah, he obviously had to learn, yeah, learn German, he had to learn French, but one thing he didn't have to bother learning was actual real Persian. <laughs> that was, he was like, yeah. But, um, I yeah, was gonna... but that was also interesting because he teached me how to speak it, how to say the, the words uh, in real life. So we've been in a, in a hotel. It was a very weird place because it was uh, close to Belarus uh, or, uh, or it was in Belarus in a, in a, in a yeah, it was like, uh, how do you say, reservoir or, I mean, a, a, a place just for us. So we were not really allowed to go outside. They told us it's too dangerous. And so we were sitting there in our little hotel rooms and we were um, sending each other voice messages. And he'd always teach me how to pronounce it correctly. And that was really nice because there was a private thing, but it, it, it became valuable for the movie as well. Yeah.
Um, so my, my final question, because unfortunately I couldn't speak to you for ages, but I've got to go and do another interview. But this time of year, I imagine for you, is you're, is always nearing the Berlinale, is the, the festival usually every year in February. It must be quite strange for you, because I guess it's probably something you, you attend in some capacity every year and have done for some time. So is it going to be quite weird having a February without your one of your favourite events of the year? I know it is for me. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's such an emotional thing. And I, I mean... The last years, it became it became really a family thing. So they managed to give the whole thing. Although, of course, there are some really really big celebrities, but on the other hand, it became intimate. So it was for me, it became more important than uh, celebrating uh, Christmas Eve. You know, because it's that that was the moment where I really met all um friends and, and we as and, and for, of course i'm i'm not i don't believe in god so for me christmas eve is not such a relevant uh important uh, um venue but uh i believe in art and and this is where we can celebrate art and films and movie making and and I, I I absolutely enjoy this moment of coming together and celebrating movie and celebrating life. Yeah, well, we'll be back next year, <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Lars. It's been yeah, thank you. speaking to you, and uh, best of luck with um, everything you've got going on. And hopefully, one day we'll be able we'll be able to do an interview like this in person. Who knows? <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully. I like uh, your sweater. I like the color. It's oh, great. Thank you very much. Good choice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.